could you could you turn your could you turn your microphone on because we can't hear you here. Sorry.
Then you try Walsall Acts as the authority strategic transport advisor. It's headed by Dave Brown, who's the chief executive of Mersey Travel, but is also the head of paid service to the land authority, so a, a statutory role. centre, 
and then a range of other non-transport projects, uh, such as skills capital funding, so money to improve uh, for, for education, college estates, for example, a low carbon college fund, uh, and funding for uh, business growth funds, so business startup, business advice. Because that's the important point with this growth deal funding, it's not just about transport, it's not just uh, about transport schemes, it's an unring fence pot, and so long as those measures support growth, they're eligible to be funded from this pot. But it's a really good funding award for the city region. Just before uh, the start of this financial year, John, as uh, Executive Secretary Officer to the Authority, uh, received our first tranche of funding to deliver the growth deal, uh, 32 million pounds, just under that because some money was held back, uh, but just over 30 million pounds came to the Authority to deliver our first year of measures set out in the growth plan. But because of that new funding regime, it means that Mersey Travel must really wear two hats because Mersey Travel has two separate roles and one where we need to avoid a conflict of interest between those roles. <coughs> what we've done across Mersey Travel is to create a sort of a Chinese wall or an ethical wall between the part of the organisation there on the left that's acting on behalf of the combined authority. So you can see there there's that schematic of Mersey Travel acting as the banker, if you like, acting as the banker to the combined authority with John and David Bray with their statutory responsibilities for the combined authority. That's on one side. And then on the other side, you've got Mersey Travel as a scheme promoter and a deliverer of transport schemes. It's very important that we avoid conflict of interest between officers involved in those two very different roles. One is about making recommendations on the merits of a scheme. The other is about delivering a scheme or promoting a scheme. If you didn't have a division between the two roles, there could be conflict of interest and the government would not look favourably at that. It would be seen as, as bad governance in any case. So what we've done is to create those divisions so that officers working on, for example, scheme developments are then involved on scheme assessment, or we use impartial people to help on the scheme assessment side. The local enterprises partnership has done something very similar. I hope this comes out as well. This is from a slide that you may have seen, uh, those of you that attend local enterprise partnership meetings may have seen this. Because the left has two roles as well, they've done something very similar. The LEP fundamentally is a company limited by guarantee, that's how it's constituted, but it also has a strategic function for the combined authority. It advises on strategic economic development matters, it coordinated the growth deal that I touched on a couple of slides ago. So again, the LEP have put in place, again, a Chinese wall, an ethical wall, between the LEP as a company and its management board of directors, and the LEP as a strategic body that offers advice up to the combined authority again to prevent conflicts from taking place between the business side and the strategic advisory side. It's a very good question. There is a review as part of the review of the combined authority that's underway now. There is a review looking at how the left is structured as well, particularly with, with recent changes in staffing. But, you know, there have been some big staffing changes on the left recently. Uh, some of the officers that were previously very much on the strategic side, people like Mike Palin, for example, have now moved. Mike is now the, the chief executive at, uh, at St. Helens. So officers that were very much on that strategic side have now moved. And there's currently a review looking at how the how the left will be constituted as part of the combined authority review. But it's to make sure that you can't have an officer in that sort of invidious position of acting on behalf of the company but also offering advice to the combined authority that might be in the left's interest. Uh, but those processes have been put in place through the creation of this assurance framework that I've come to at the moment to ensure that people are clear about role and responsibilities and the risk of the in the process. So that's very timely. Uh, what we've produced, again, the chair's question there, to try to avoid those conflicts of interest taking place is an assurance framework. Bit of a clunky title, it's one that the intertitle of the government requires to use. But effectively, the assurance framework for the city region is a guide to making decisions and releasing growth deal funding. It was a requirement from the government, it was a condition of getting that £264 million that we produced this framework and we made that available to the government. And what it does, picking up on the chair's questions now, it sets out responsibilities and expectations 
So, for example, a scheme that comes for funding through the growth plan must have a business case. Whether it's a transport scheme, or a skills scheme, or an economic development scheme, there must be a business case to it. Yeah, what's the strategic case? How's the money going to be managed? There must be impartial technical support for appraisal. So that, I think, picks up one of your questions there, Chair. If Mersey Travel is developing a business case for a transport scheme, what we have access to is an impartial consultant, <coughs> an impartial consultant who helps appraise and offer impartial advice on that business case who is not party to the production of that business case. So supporting officers with the appraisal uh, and ensuring that there's no conflict between officers who are promoting a scheme and who are then being asked to assess a scheme. So I'm more involved on the assessment side of things, but I have no involvement in the creation of business cases uh, or the promotion of business cases. So let's say I'm up here. If Peel performs a business case for logistics, Insurance framework. Um, what's important to note with the insurance framework is that although the growth deal was coordinated and submitted by the Low Price Price Partnership, the ultimate decision making body for that money is the combined authority. And that's because the Low Price Price Partnership, being company limited by guarantee, can't hold public money, it can't receive public money. Therefore, the combined authority takes on that role. And in releasing money, the combined authority can uh, release it subject to conditions. So you can only have this money to deliver this scheme if you do A, B, and C. One of those conditions might be uh, the requirement to monitor and evaluate the scheme. And Mersey Travel, as the accountable body, or the, the banker for those monies at the end of the day, has the, right to refuse, has the right to refuse to carry out a decision if that is unlawful. So if a due process hasn't been satisfied, let's say environmental impact assessment regulations or some other statutory requirements, if there's been a breach of statutory process, Mersey Travel has the right to refer that decision back to the command authority. Again, I hope you can see this, but it just shows how decisions will be taken by the combined authority in relation to, to different funding streams. The main funding streams at the moment are linked to transport, employment and skills, economic development, and housing and spatial planning. And what we've put in place in this assurance framework is a detailed process that if you're promoting a transport scheme, there is, a, there is a detailed process that we need to go through. 
both to create a business case and to ensure that there is no conflict of interest, as I said earlier. Recommendations are made to the combined authority by one of those relevant subbodies, so it might be the Mercy Travel Committee in the case of the Transport Scheme, or the Employment and Skills Board in the case of Employment and Skills Money. Funding is considered by the combined authority when there's a decision. If it's approved, Mercy Travel then has the right to release that money, and then there is an expectation that a scheme promoter monitors and evaluates that scheme, going back then into a feedback loop to identify future projects. There's a hyperlink, I think that works on the PDF as well, so that's a hyperlink to the assurance framework just for your information. And there's my contact details, so I think that's set the scene as to how the money works and how the assurance will work. I'm happy to take any questions on the agenda. Thank you very much. My question, as I say, was, and I have had a copy of the Constitution, and one of the things we were interested in was, obviously the PTE makes certain decisions, and it has those criteria, and it's set in the legislation. Um, we wanted to know, um, how do you decide what to, do you, do you send everything to the city region, or are there some things that you don't send to the city region? I mean, obviously that might be a question for you, it might be a question for John, as a member of the executive. So um, it's just a clarification for that, really. It's just something that we felt we needed to understand. Most travel as the um, passenger transport executive receives levy funding on an annual basis from the combined authority. Um, and the uh, most travel itself has its own legal rights, duties, responsibilities, which it utilises as the ability to perform. Um, it accounts through its own decision making processes as most travel in terms of the decisions for spending that levy funding and counts on an annual basis then back to the combined authority. Um, there are some duties which it specifically um, undertakes for the combined authority on an agency basis, so for example, the um, work in relation to tunnels, the operation, um, and, um, and the, there are regular reports through to both the Motor Travel Committee and to the combined authority in relation to access. Well, other than as a um, as a point of principle, were, were there are decisions that affect the um, the overall level of the transport levy budget, um, strategic decisions that are about the assets of the combined authority, tunnel tolls being, being the main one. Those are the 
decisions for the combined authority. And then within the within the, the constitution, the scheme of delegation, if, if it, it wouldn't be for Mersey Travel as, as directors to, to make any uh, can make recommendations around significant areas of policy. So an example might be if we wanted to look to change the concession and travel scheme, I think that would be a decision that we would uh, take in the first part to the Mersey Travel Committee, we then I would anticipate we would, would refer that, or well, may refer that decision to, to the combined authority, and make recommendations to the combined authority because they have strategic transport issues. Um, another key element of, of that assurance framework is um, the Audit and Governance Committee of Mersey Travel, um, which again, has, uh, oversees the executive, if you like, that oversees Mersey Travel um, in respect of you know, anything that's affected the risk register, internal audit, those statutory obligations. Um, so it, there are various checks and balances within, within the process. It's a scheme of delegation which ultimately determines what is reported upwards through the Mersey Travel Committee and then onwards to the combined authority. And within that structure as well, there are other um, checks and balances around you know, access to the agenda of, of the Mersey Travel Committee and access to the minutes of the Mersey Travel Committee. When I say the Mersey Travel Committee, it's a bit confusing. What well, the Mersey Travel Executive, um, rather than, well, I think it might be something that we wish to pick up in the review. I don't know, but there are two. Uh, the, the Mersey Travel Subcommittee of the Combined Authority is the member committee that's chaired by Councillor Robinson that was the ITA. Uh, the, past, the, the executive, which are the directors of Mersey Travel, um, also formally meet as a statutory body, and that at the moment is also called Mersey Travel. Um, called one the Mersey Travel Committee, one Mersey Travel. And we used to call it the executive, and, and it's possibly clearer if we say the executive. Yeah. Um, so the executive makes decisions. I think you get that is how you get the assurance that executive decisions are um, given oversight appropriately, and trying to uh, and, and that and that's where the Mersey Travel Subcommittee and the Mersey Travel Audit and Governance Committee and indeed the Mersey Travel um, Performance and Review Committee as well, which has, which has a role, and then within the act. At the moment, the combined authority, as you know, because the combined authority, looking backwards on last year, is only looking at effectively transport expenditure. There is elements of duplication within um, within that structure, but as we move forward, as you said, as the combined authority is uh, picking up possibly accountable body status for a number of funding streams around non-transport activities. And there's this big one already, which is the employment and skills capital. Then that combined of the combined authority and, and this committee will be um, will not just be looking at transport activity and Mersey travels activities, but but also um, that of other of other bodies and, and their role in it. The other thing as well is um, to point out that as well as just Mersey travels executive. Um, there is that element of decisions made around transport by Alton, which again we can find up. There is a, a mechanism for the combined authority having review or having oversight of, of, of Alton transport decisions. At an operational level, Alton is still able to make operational decisions on transport, but I wouldn't be able to make strategic decisions around transport without reference to equally the Mersey Travel Committee and authority. Um, but I would acknowledge that it's quite a complicated structure at the moment. It's one of the legacies of, of a, the some unforeseen circumstances of the changes of governments. That's great, thank you very much. Have you got any questions?
through certain aspects that can be delegated down to either Mercy Travel Committee and or to Mercy Travel as the executive. Um, but there are certain powers that can't be delegated. And so principally the duties in relation to tunnel toll testing, as John's alluded to, remain with the compliant authority. And the recommendation will be made from Mercy Travel Committee or to the compliant authority. Uh, there are some other powers within the County of Mercy Side Act about having a police force, etc., and, and also uh, around uh, jurisdiction points. Um, those are all still the responsibility of the combined authority, but those are um, delegated to those who travel to what to take on its behalf. So the collection tolls, for example, the renewals and maintenance, and for the jurisdiction stays the same. I think just to add to that, that's because this is an important point. It follows the ownership of the assets and the tunnels as assets have transferred in ownership to the combined authority. Um, no facility or ability in it would be desirable, I don't think, for those to transfer in ownership from the ITA down effectively to passenger transport executive. They are assets of the County of Merseyside and they're, they're held by the combined authority. So that has all those powers. Mersey travel operate the Mersey tunnels, um, but that is because the combined authorities determined that Mersey travel should be the body that, you know, should, should operate it, it, It's not necessarily, that, that, you know, it, it may not necessarily always be the case that Mersey travel operates, and that's a decision for the combined authority, not for Mersey travel, if you like, or not for the executive. Can we do that report? Thank you very much. It's extremely comprehensive. And then we move on to item six, Liverpool City Region Combined Authority Internal Audit Plan of Work 2015 2016. Thanks, Chair. Um, members will recall at the meeting on the 13th of January this year that this committee agreed to push reliance on the relevant internal audit work that's been undertaken during 2015 16 by Mersey Travel as the executive body and um, where appropriate by Halton Borough Council. Uh, both bodies have now produced their respective internal audit plans of work and both um, have had that subject to the usual approval arrangements. So um, the Mercy Travel Internal Audit Plan was subject to approval by the Audit and Governance Subcommittee at its meeting on the 23rd of March 2015. In respect of combined authority assurance work, this is represented by an allocation of up to 150 internal audit days which have been provided to um, provide grant assurance work in respect of CA funding streams and those are highlighted in paragraph 3.6 of page 76 of the bundle and also any additional funding streams that might emerge in the forthcoming year. In addition to this, Mercy Travel's internal audit plan also includes provision for um, some specific internal audit reviews in respect of combined authority assets or obligations. Those for this year are listed at paragraph 3.10 they are the Tunnel Tools Recording Systems and Reconciliation Processes, the Program Management Arrangements, Commissioning Arrangements, and also Compliance with Vendor's Code of Conduct. Updates on the outcomes of these reviews, none of which have been started yet, will be brought to the subsequent meetings of this committee. For information, Halton Borough Council's internal audit plan has also been approved by this Business Efficiency Board, which you'll recall fulfills the role of its audit committee. The Divisional Manager of Audit and Operational Finance has confirmed to me that provision has been made in this year's internal audit plan to ensure appropriate assurance will be obtained in respect of any relevant CA funding streams and activities. Um, but other than that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, any questions? Uh, can we move to the recommendations then? We recommend that the Full City Region Provide Authority Audit Committee is recommended to mention provide comments in respect of by an authority plan of work and request regular updates in respect of internal audit work undertaken in accordance with the proposed plan of work. Are we in agreement? Agreed. Can we move on to item 7, please, which is government supported arrangements across the combined authority. Again, we requested this so that we actually had some sort of background knowledge as to what was going on across the rest of the country, really. Thanks for some entertaining reading. Um, Right. Is 
set up a short note chair uh, that gives a bit of a recap. Uh, got some issues in my presentation a few minutes ago about combined authorities. Um, so just starting from the top there, very much explaining. Thank you. Got, uh, very much explaining how combined authorities are, are bottom up bodies. They're, they're driven by governance reviews <coughs> that happens on local <coughs> level. Um, they're not imposed nationally, so local areas must come forward with proposals to review their governance arrangements. Must propose what's called a scheme, and it's then for the Secretary of State to consult upon that scheme and then confirm or otherwise the, yeah, the order that the research on own to go. Um, and going back to what I said in my presentation as well, the, the statutory responsibilities are limited to economic development and transport, and there are some statutory tests that need to be satisfied. In other words, we can only justify an area, we can only justify the creation of combined authority, where that would improve the exercise of statutory functions, the effectiveness and efficiency of transport, and improve economic conditions in the area. So that's a map, uh, just under section six, showing where existing combined authorities have been created across, uh, across England. Um, but interestingly, there's also a number of areas that are looking at creating combined authorities as well. So there are proposals underway at the moment to create combined authorities in the Tees Valley area, for example, Middlesbrough, Darlington area, uh, also Pan Dorset, uh, Derby, Derbyshire, and Nottingham, and Nottinghamshire. Those, those last two are quite interesting because they're former county areas that have unitary authority within them, and they're now reverting to a more strategic model of governance for transport and economic development. And they're also being explored in Lancashire, just over the border from us, the West Midlands, and down in Oxfordshire, Buckinghamshire, and Northamptonshire. No two combined authorities are exactly the same. That's a product of the, the legislation process that underpins them. Uh, so, what I've done in section 10 is to, to go through the current combined authorities that have been established. Obviously, Greater Manchester is the oldest that was established four years ago. Uh, and I've just briefly described. Who, who sits on those authorities on their main transport the sub boards underneath them on their executive bodies um, for, for the combined authorities that are in place to date. Happy to make many queries there. Um, section 11, I'll just to conclude, as I mentioned, the combined authority models are underway, or being examined in lots of other parts of the country. Um, and in terms of integrated transport authorities, um, there is no only one integrated transport authority left in England in the West Midlands, um, although we understand that the West Midlands is looking at other models of governance, but looking for what's happened as yet. Um, that's just a quick counter through some real functions and perhaps they can be in the or, or follow anything on the chat. Thank you very much. It's very nice to be able to Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is the film uh, Manchester that's on? Manchester is the only combined authority that is looking at health, which came on the back of the devolution um, announcement very recently. Um, so yeah, uh, the only one I'm aware of that has health and also social care money coming to it is, is the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Coming out this report, thank you.